the member for Blair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Seat, My question Warnan. is to the Minister for Government Services. At the recent public hearings of the Royal Commission into RoboDebt, what have we learned about the former coalition government's shameful RoboDebt scheme? Yeah. Give the call to the Minister for the National Disability Insurance Scheme and Minister for Services Australia. I'd like to. Um, I'd like to express gratitude to the work of the Robo-Debt Robo Royal Commission so far for uncovering evidence which would not have otherwise been available to the Australian people. Some of that evidence shows that by the middle of 2017, the former coalition government was well and truly aware of Robo-Debt's many problems. As I updated the House yesterday, there were literally tens of thousands of articles in the media several hundred mentions in Parliament, countless representations made to MPs and Senators on all sides. There was the missing million dollar report which was shelved inconveniently before it could be provided. But most importantly, the, government, the former government were on notice from the victims bravely sharing their own stories. Despite this, I can advise that from the 1st of July 2017, a total of 764,000 Australians who had received welfare payments in the past were unlawfully accused of defrauding the government and slapped with robo-debt notices. Wow. Now, of this, 348,000 were subsequently notified that there was an apparent discrepancy during the scheme but did not have a debt raised against them. However, the remaining 416,000 Australians were still issued unlawful robo-debts after July 2017. If the coalition government had heeded these repeated, numerous, well-documented warnings and stopped the robo-debt scheme at that stage, 764,000 of our fellow Australians would never have been subjected to this stressful, unlawful behaviour by their own government. Not only did the Morrison government continue with this illegal scheme for more than three years until it was only eventually stopped by a class action in November of 2020, we know from evidence at the recent hearings of the Royal Commission that they were continually dismissive of the warnings. What if the Morrison government had not ignored the repeated warnings? What if they had actually published the $1 million report? What if they had heeded the pleas of the victims? Could this illegal scheme have ended in July of 2017? Now, we will never know. Order. The member for Fremantle is warned. The manager of opposition business on a point of order. Well, Mr Speaker, again, this minister is trespassing into the territory that you have rightly warned against, drawing conclusions, which is the work of the Royal Commission, rather than reporting on evidence. And the risk is that this creates an, an impression of prejudicing the work of the Royal Commission, Order. because the Minister is saying publicly you what may he resume wants your seat. to I reminded the House yesterday and the Minister that I was, unco Order. I was uncomfortable about members and ministers refrain and asking them to refrain to give their opinion about the evidence. I asked the Minister to continue with his answer to make it clear to the House that he is referring to evidence within the Royal Commission. I'll give him a call. Thanks, Mr Speaker. Despite the protestations of the opposition, it is a fact that the scheme was illegal. It is a fact that 764,000 Australian citizens, who pay the opposition's wages, by the way, were unlawfully served with debt notices. The point which really remains in conclusion is simply this. The architects of robo-debt believed that the ends justified the means. And the only remaining question for me is when will all of the architects at the top of the robo-debt tree take full accountability and take full culpability and responsibility for the most illegal administrative scheme run by any government in the history of the Commonwealth? Yeah.